In this video, we're going to be discussing biceps load test 2 and biceps load test 1, but before we do that, let's do a brief review of the relevant anatomy. When evaluating for slap lesions, it's important to understand some basic anatomy. So right here we have the scapula. Posteriorly at the top we have the acromion or acromial process. Right here we have the coracoid process, which is actually going to be the origin of the short head of the biceps brachii. Right here we have the neck of the scapula, and at its tip we have the glenoid fossa, which is a concavity in which the head of the humerus, which you can see right there where my mouse is, resides, and it forms the glenohumeral joint. Now, around the glenoid fossa we have the glenoid rim, and the labrum is going to reside and sit circumferentially around the glenoid rim. So over here would be the anterior labrum, this would be the inferior labrum, the posterior labrum we can't see, but it's basically behind the head of the humerus over here. And then up here, kind of deep to uh, the short head of the biceps tendon, would actually be the superior labrum. On the humerus over here, we have the lesser tubercle. Over here is the greater tubercle. And then, of course, we have a groove that sits between those two tubercles called the intertubercular groove or the bicipital groove. Down here is the long head of the biceps muscle belly, and then up here is the long head of the biceps tendon, which you can see goes superiorly and actually goes into this bicipital groove. And as it comes up through that bicipital groove, it loops around here and actually attaches on a structure called the supraglenoid tubercle. It's a small bony prominence on top of the glenoid fossa. And this long head of the biceps tendon also has an origin on the superior labrum. Here's another view of the long head of the biceps tendon, and you can see it as it goes up through this bicipital groove towards the supraglenoid tubercle right over here my mouse is. Right here you see an unlabeled ligament called the transverse humeral ligament, which spans between the greater tubercle over here laterally and the lesser tubercle anteriorly. And you can see that this ligament actually creates a tunnel through which the long head of the biceps tendon travels superiorly, and that actually holds the tendon in place and prevents it from bowing. Then as this tendon goes across, you can see it attaching on the supraglenoid tubercle and also on the superior labrum. And what you actually see right here, this tear, this is called a slap lesion. Slap stands for superior labrum anteroposterior, meaning these lesions occur to the superior labrum and they usually occur in an anterior to posterior direction. But in the end, this is a slap lesion. This anatomy is important to understand because it's important to know that when the biceps brachii are under a huge amount of tension, well, they're going to be pulling on the long head of the biceps tendon, as you would imagine, and then this tendon is going to pull on the labrum, and if the tension occurs just right with enough force and with enough speed, you can end up tearing the superior labrum, and that is a slap lesion. The first special test we're going to talk about is the more commonly used of the two, and that's the biceps load test 2, which is specific for detecting slap lesions. To perform this test, the patient's going to be positioned in supine, as you see right here, and the PT is going to begin by positioning the patient's upper extremity in 120 degrees of shoulder abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, forearm supinated, or radio ulnar supination, and then also 90 degrees of shoulder external rotation. That's a lot of information right there, so let's take a look at this video. So I'm going to take the patient's arm, and I'm really going to do all three of the first movements at the same time. So right here you see the shoulder is in about 120 degrees of abduction, I have the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion, and her forearm is supinated. And the way that you can tell the forearm is supinated is if the anterior forearm faces the patient. In other words, it faces away from me, the PT. And then I'm going to proceed to put her into about 90 degrees of shoulder external rotation. So approximately like this. Once you get to this point, the patient's going to perform resisted elbow flexion against PT manual resistance. So her shoulder position, her humerus, the radial ulnar position, all those things need to stay constant. The only thing that she's going to try to do is flex her elbow using the biceps brachii muscle, and I'm going to resist that. So let's take a look at that. 
So there's the resistance. Try to keep every other joint in the same position. And for the biceps load test two, a positive test is going to be shoulder pain onset or pain increase during the resisted elbow flexion. So when we're doing that resisted elbow flexion, either the pain comes on there, or if it's already present, it increases. And if you have a positive test, that's indicative of a slap lesion. Now, as a standalone test, the psychometrics here are excellent. The sensitivity is 90%, meaning that if this test is negative, there's a 90% chance that the patient does not have a slap lesion. The specificity is all the way up at 97%, meaning if this test is positive, there's a 97% chance that the patient does have a slap lesion. Let's take a look at this test one more time. So we're going to take the patient's arm, put them into 120 degrees of shoulder abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, with the forearm supinated, the anterior forearm faces the patient. Then we're going to bring them into about 90 degrees of shoulder external rotation, and then we're essentially just going to do resisted elbow flexion. I'm going to try to pull her forearm out. She's going to try and resist. Positive test is during that resisted elbow flexion, the pain increases or the pain comes on. And now we're going to look at the biceps load test one. This special test is not nearly as commonly used as the biceps load test two. And to understand why, let's look at the rationale for using this test. This test is used to evaluate the integrity of the superior glenoid labrum, so looking for slap lesions, but in shoulders with recurrent dislocation. So for people that chronically dislocate their shoulders, they are at higher risk for having a slap lesion. And so this special test is used to evaluate for a slap lesion, but in shoulders with recurrent dislocations. Now to perform the biceps load test one, it's really two parts. The first part of it is really just the apprehension test, which we covered in another video. The apprehension test, recall, was one of the special tests used in the diagnosis of anterior shoulder instability. So we're really just going to start off with that. The second half of the test involves the resisted elbow flexion, which we saw in the biceps load test too. So let's take a look at this. We're going to start really by just performing the apprehension test. So we're going to move the patient's arm, upper extremity, into 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, and radial ulnar supination. Okay? In this part of the test, the only difference with the biceps load test 2 is actually the shoulder abduction angle. In the biceps load test 2, it was 120 degrees of abduction. Here, it's 90 degrees of abduction. But in this case, it's identical to the apprehension test. And being like the apprehension test, we're going to move the patient's shoulder passively through external rotation. Now for this test, we're going to stop the external rotation when the patient reports apprehension and or pain. Again, the same thing that would indicate a positive test in the apprehension test. So we're moving through external rotation. And let's suppose right there is where the patient reported that apprehension or pain in the shoulder. And now at this point, the patient's going to perform resisted elbow flexion against PT manual resistance. Again, just like in the biceps load test 2, we want the shoulder angle, the elbow angle, the radio ulnar joint, everything to stay static. The only thing that's happening is the patient is performing resisted elbow flexion. So let's take a look at that. There's the resisted elbow flexion right there. And a positive biceps load test 1 is going to be where the resisted elbow flexion actually relieves the discomfort of the standard apprehension test. So again, the apprehension goes down and or the pain goes down. That constitutes a positive biceps load test one. So one major difference between these two tests is that the biceps load test two is provocative because a positive test is pain onset or pain increase during that resisted elbow flexion. The biceps load test one is an easing test because we're looking at easing of the symptoms, either apprehension or pain, after the standard apprehension test. And just like with the biceps load test two, the psychometrics of the biceps load test one are also very good. The sensitivity and specificity are 91 and 97 percent, respectively. And again, this particular special test you would use to evaluate slap lesions, 
but only in patients with recurrent shoulder dislocations. Let's take a look at this test one more time. So we're going to begin by doing the apprehension test. So we bring the patient's shoulder into 90 degrees of abduction, elbows at 90 degrees of flexion, and radial ulnar supination. From here, we're going to perform external rotation up to the point where the patient exhibits apprehension and or pain. And from there, it's just resisted elbow flexion. And a positive test is going to be easing of the symptoms of the apprehension test, apprehension and or pain. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.